Hello. In this short knowledge clip, we are going to look at the welfare implications of different changes in the market. So, in order to be able to do that, first we need to establish a relationship between the welfare of the participants of a market, so all those who are present in a market, and the Marshallian cross system, so the demand and supply functions. Let us look at the consumer side, so the demand. Pardon, I'm going to use a different color here. So the demand function, the inverse demand function, is going to give us the willingness to pay for a unit of good by a certain consumer. Of course, the market consists of heterogeneous agents, that is, consumers are not completely alike. There will be certain consumers who are, for example, quite rich, or they need that given good very much. Why? Because the marginal utility from consuming that particular good and service is going to be higher for them than for the rest. For example, it's possible that there is someone in the market who would be willing to pay 10 euros for one kilogram or one unit of that good and they would be willing to buy a certain amount for that good for that price. There can be someone else who is actually not value, who doesn't value the uh, good so much or just simply poorer than the first consumer, so this uh, particular individual is willing to buy a certain amount for 9 euros. And we may assume that there is someone who is only willing to pay 8 euros per unit. Now the welfare implication of uh, any market outcomes is going to, of course, depend on the equilibrium price. So let's assume that the equilibrium price is 8.5 in this market. Now obviously those who are not willing to pay at least 8.5 for this good will not buy anything. So these transactions here are not going to happen. The welfare effect is zero then. On the other hand, those who were willing to pay even more than 8.5 are actually getting this good cheaper than they would be willing to pay for. So, the first individual, then, I'm sorry for this, but really this is not ideal. So here we are going to 1.5 per unit uh, bonus welfare for this consumer, and here, 0.8 per unit, sorry, 0.5 per unit. That means that actually these two consumers were willing to pay more for one unit of the good, but nevertheless, because of the single market price being lower than their uh, willingness to pay or reservational price, that's another word for willingness to pay. So for this reason, they are going to have a welfare bonus. Now, if you look at the aggregate market so when we add up individual demand then we get a continuous function like this and at a given price here we know that a certain amount of consumer surplus will be created so those, for example, one person who is willing to pay a lot for this good is getting this, because of the market, much cheaper. So actually this part here is going to be a welfare bonus or a surplus for this individual. Another individual who is willing to pay as much as this one here is also going to have a consumer surplus uh, equaling the difference between the willingness to pay and the actual market price. 
and so on. And because we have here basically infinite amount of uh, consumers, uh, for this reason, we can identify the consumer surplus as the, the area of this particular triangle. So above the line, which shows us the market equilibrium price and below the demand curve. So how could you calculate this? Of course, using the formula for the area of triangles that you learned in elementary school. So if you have Q star, you have V star, and here you have the intercept, which would be the maximum price which uh, a consumer is willing to pay for this good, then you could say that then the consumer surplus is nothing else than P max minus P star times Q star divided by 2. Let's see the producer's side. Producers are also going to have some kind of willingness to sell. So willingness to sell, let's see. Here we have then an inverse supply function. And the inverse supply function will uh, reflect the efficiency of production and later, so the cost efficiency of production, and later we will see that this will be nothing else than the marginal cost of a firm. So the most efficient producer, let's assume, is willing to, uh, to already sell some of the goods for two euros. And there is someone who is a bit less efficient, so they are going to be willing only to supply a certain amount for three euros and so on. Here we have someone who is even less efficient and requires at least a purchasing price of four. Now let's assume that the market equilibrium price is 3.5 for this good. Then, again, using the same way of thinking as we did with the consumer surplus, you can see that the most efficient producer would be willing to sell the good at two, but actually this firm can do better, and for every single unit sold, 1.5 euro surplus is created. For the second one, this is going to be just 0.5, but it will still be a positive surplus. And, of course, again, just like in the previous case, those producers who are actually only willing to sell the good at a price higher than the equilibrium price are going to not supply anything. So, you can generalize this again and say that then in the market the total uh, producer surplus must be the area of this triangle. So the triangle is, as you can see, between the line representing the equilibrium price in the market and the inverse supply function. So if we put this together and has a partial equilibrium system in the market, with a certain demand and a certain supply functions, then in this particular equilibrium, we are going to have a certain amount of consumer surplus and a certain amount of producer surplus. So this is the producer surplus and this is the consumer surplus. And if you add them up, then, of course, you may say that there is a total surplus, which is just then the sum of these. And this is going to give you the welfare improving effect of the current market outcome. How can we use this to analyze the welfare effect of a change in this market? We can do the following.
let's assume that there is a negative supply shock in the market. We know that that is going to be represented here as a leftward shift of the supply function to S prime. The new market equilibrium will be Q star prime and P star prime. Now in this new situation, using the definitions as before, you are going to find that here this is going to be a new consumer surplus and this here is going to be our new producer surplus. And you can see that both of them became smaller. So in this particular case we can say that a negative supply shock had a detrimental effect on the welfare. Thank you.